Hello my soccer universe! Final video for the Euros, also the final one where I use my old layout for uh, tournaments. And yeah, England are the winners, winning their first ever Euro final, the first ever Euros against a Germany team that has won eight so far and this is the first time that they lose um, a final. Pretty remarkable stuff, uh, we'll talk a lot about it, but I think we gotta start with this dump head here who for whatever reason had in his mind that the game starts at nine local time and it was just by random chance and i remember because i know at five lusk is playing so i really wanted to watch lusk and then um i saw in the tv menu there's something with women's urine i thought oh, maybe this is a replay but this is a little bit odd it did not click here Check. I even had it in my file that I showed I had the kickoff time right. I just completely messed it. And I watched the last five minutes of regulation and then the whole overtime period. So maybe I got the, the decision. But I wanted to record this video already much, much earlier. Maybe even yesterday in the evening. Uh, but in the end, yeah, I caught up on it uh, this morning. Uh, watching some highlights uh reading up on it listening up to it so yeah that i can talk with a little bit more authority about the uh, women's euro final that i was actually really really excited about in many ways and then yeah yeah there was an overlap with the last game uh complete idiot right here as i said while england and germany never have been my favorite teams um overall watching soccer i have to say this final had like classic you know it's just England and Germany, I said it in my preview, England versus Germany at Wembley, it's just scream classic matchup. The one thing that I thought was really not classic, although England could not have really made it nice, wouldn't it be better if Germany played white and England in red? I really think this would, I mean, don't, don't get wrong, I actually like Germany in green. I think there's something about it. Uh, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever that they play in green, but there's something about this classic green color for Germany. Uh, although I didn't like the mint numbers and it that looked a, little, looked a little bit weird, but other than that, I think the Germany jerseys looked all right. But uh, for me, England, Germany is only England, Germany, when England plays in white and Germany in red. Uh, Germany plays in white and England plays in red. Just my personal pre preference, I guess, uh, even though I was not alive by any means in 1966, I think that plays a huge part in it. But yeah, uh, having said all that, I think uh, it was overall a rather tense final. It broke, of course, the record for a uh, women's national team game it being played at Wembley. Uh, the record numbers anyway, and we'll have to talk about Legacy a teeny bit afterwards as well. Uh, you know, the previous record, record from 2017 was smashed, I think double, uh, uh, doubled easily. But you know, England has bigger stadiums. So uh, that was rather cool. Um, so what I wanted to say for, uh, to, to begin, I think the first blow to Germany was dealt. And again, this is now what I had to work up <laughs> on. That Alexandra Pop had, I mean, she had already an in, 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 in injury, but she, um, it was clear in the warm up that she will not be able to play. Uh, in that sense, Germany was kind of missing that talismanic striker up front. Not, that she wasn't ac ac actually starting, uh, this tour to, to turn them up front, but she, uh, managed to get this position in. And, you know, it's a little bit, uh, tragic story because she never played at a, 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 a Euro, she was always in, injured and so on. So in that sense, yeah, first blow to Germany, to Germany, but Germany definitely have a deep squad to, um, uh, you know, make up for that. England started in the sixth game with the same lineup, which I think also is rather, rather impressive. Um, and probably dominating the first half a little bit more. I mean, uh, yes, largely they neutralized each other uh, with slight advantages. England, who had the first chance, oops, a little <laughs> happening there. They had the first uh, half chance, but there was never a really, really big chance. However, the one uh, big call was there was um, a goal line scramble in, uh, in front of the England goal. And Germany couldn't get it over the line. Goal and scramble is very important, especially on the right side from the TV, TV screen in that final. And then suddenly the ball hits the hand of an English defender. And uh, yeah, was it a penalty? Was it not, 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 not a penalty. I would personally lean 
rather no penalty. However, I think it should have been at least checked in VAR. Uh, that seemed a little bit odd to me, but you know, uh, that, that, that is the one thing. Uh, it was a rather, uh, Germany was not well in the game, but they were rather physical. However, they changed at the halftime when, uh, changes, uh, when, uh, Foss Tecklenburg made a few changes and then suddenly, um, Germany was a whole lot more uh, impressive going forward and actually pressed England back a little bit. Uh, not again, not to the to the point where they were down on it, but they had 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 a few chances. I think Lina Lee, Margul with a one uh, really interesting one where I mean she toe poked it away from goal. Uh, you know, you can or if this goes on, goal is probably in. Uh, it has to be said that uh, that, that way. but just right in this phase. And so uh, England was a little bit on the back foot and at that point uh, Serena Wiegmann made two uh, changes to kind of get uh, Germany a little bit under uh, underground, bring on Thun and Russo. Then uh, there was um, a scene where suddenly uh, Beth Mead, who were, was probably England's or the tournament's best player after all, had to come off uh, at right when England was playing with one man less because she had to be treated. Uh, it was a goal kick. Um, Walsh plays a uh, long, uh, deep pass to Toon, who runs free on goal and then beautifully dinks it over the goalkeeper. Wonderful, wonderful goal coming a little bit out of nowhere at that at, at, at point. And seemingly sh shaking also Germany again making a few uh, changes and then Germany uh, in the last few 50 minutes were definitely pressing more and got a very nicely played goal of Asmo Tumagul who pulls full position to get it 1-1 game level and at that point you also had to feel that Germany definitely have the upper hand now going into overtime though uh, and that now I can tell from through experience uh, going over time, it was pretty tough watching uh, the first half where I thought that um, Germany maybe looked a little bit fresher, but they couldn't get it uh, onto the field. Yes, they had a little bit more control, but um, they slowed also the game almost willfully down. And so it was a uh, so the first half of all time was not good watching at all. Uh, and in the second half, it kind of continued this way until a corner kick comes. Goldmuff scramble and uh, Chloe Kelly tries to top the once in, uh, doesn't go. The, a very weird clearance by the goalie. And by the, uh, uh, and by the way, the goalie at first also had a very weird clearance, a back pass, or was it that she just put out? It was, well, well, it was very weird. And Kelly puts it over the line. Um, before that, of course, my fav favorite scene of the entire final that I saw is when. Uh, um, it was a Kirby who, who got put uh, pushed down a foul and then how she, you could see it on the TV, TV camera, how, how she was yelling at the German judge play, I'm not happy with her. And you could re clearly lip read. And then I thought, did, did, did you say F and B? Did you? And then the commentator, the Austrian commentator said, if you know the English language, that was not pretty. I said, yeah, she said F and B. So very interesting, very, very interesting stuff like that. After the goal, also the, when the substitutes came on, another really fun scene was, uh, there she had like this little sheet with technically, um, uh, <laughs> uh, tech, taking notes, uh, to a few, few, few players and how the English player tried to read the note, they didn't take it away from her. <laughs> Weird stuff. However, then England, it reminded me a lot of how France just killed off the game against Belgium in 2018. Uh, Germany really didn't have a chance anymore. And so England win it uh, for the first time. They win it at Wembley, uh, what the men could not do uh, in, a, as I said already, in a much more positive atmosphere than um, we had it uh, before, uh, then we had at the men's tour to the to, to moment. Uh, that clearly has to be said. To me, this is the biggest selling point for women's football uh, that the atmosphere is much more family friendly. Uh, and I wish that we would move the men's game, especially for international tournaments, more into that direction again. Um, for me, the biggest story coming out of it is Sarina Wichmann uh, not only broke the German hegemony on the title. She won back-to-back -back tournaments, first with her home country at home, now with her uh, new team also at home. This is a feat that is not to be overlooked. An absolute, absolute uh, great result for her. And uh, I think she established herself as one of the top coaches, in addition 
putting the Netherlands team into the World Cup final. World Cup come, come, come up or in ne next year, so uh, that also makes it rather interesting. Um, I think overall, if you're an England fan, I think you're looking at quite positive time now. Uh, yes, it's all about the men's team winning something, but I think something is growing within the English game. Not only this women's triumph that uh, did not come unexpected. For me, England were the favorites to this tournament with home home for the watch in a very open tour tournament. I think England were always the favorites, but you also can look at the youth sides that have won an under uh, was an under 17 World Cup. Uh, recently, you had the youth uh, Euros won by England. I think at this very moment, the FA is getting their SHIT together and is reaping the benefits in a country that is so infa uh, infatuated with football that you're actually wondering why don't they win more and i think uh good times are coming the women are paving the way forward and maybe the men will follow relatively soon i it i wouldn't be surprised if the men wouldn't win uh, and a, a tournament in the next, um, yeah, let's say next six years or so on. I really feel that it is imminent in uh, in a way. Now, um, as I said, many positives coming from this tournament. We had many spectators. There's a lot of car coverage. I'm pretty sure that uh, Chloe Kelly and uh, with her with her especially with her celebration, another Brandy Chastain moment, in in a way will. Uh, become a star. This English team will become stars in Germany. Uh, also, these um, these uh, players have now really riveted the country in a, in a country that dominated women's football, but they, they, are, they didn't even show all the games in Austria. We had wall-to-wall -wall coverage for this tournament. Um, so, and we see this all around, all over Europe. Uh, so, the big thing is now to carry this forward. Uh, the women's game needs to grow. We had a few promising signs already with Barcelona playing Champions League in the camp now. Um, I know it's not that I'm not saying that all the teams should play in the men's big stadiums because they will not have to draw, but I would love to see a better access for girls and uh, going to the game, uh, uh, being able to play the game uh, at first. I also think that the facilities and the investment needs to go into the women's structure as well, because this is a really, really fast growing sport where if you're a team and you are willing to invest, you can actually reap benefits rather, rather, rather quickly. Um, I see it also with my own girls, uh, and that's why I'm talked, I'm talked talking about that. You know, they have some interest. They, I mean, they are not watching 90 minutes unless they go with me, stadium, but they have interest in, in the game. They were surprised. Well, women do, do, do play football. Yes, the Austrians are really good. I actually was a little bit sad that we couldn't watch uh, the Austria games together with uh, them because uh, we were on vacation. But, um, you know, I told them and they were kind of really, really happy about it. And they were asking me. Um, but I also I also think that the general facilities, uh, you know, the I hear that the Women's Super League uh, in England, they're not playing the games, they're playing it not in the cities or wherever they're playing them far out. There needs to be better access to these games, uh, make them proper home grounds. No. We don't need to have the Arsenal women play it at the Emirates or uh, have the um, uh, United women, do they exist, uh, play at Old Trafford all, all, all the time, but have secondary grounds. I'm actually thinking, I, I don't know if Barcelona did it, but they had the mini study, which I don't think exists anymore, but they make now another one. Have a secondary ground that holds like five to six thousand and have the teams play there. Same goes for, Germ for, for Germany and grow it from there and maybe they can move them over into the big stadiums. That would be my hope that this goes forward. Um, yes, I have to claim it for myself. I also should uh, watch more women's football football. I actually made myself a note to uh, try to follow a little bit more the Champions, uh, champ, Champions League and also the Austrian national team. So I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not excluding myself from the whole uh, story. But I really would like to see a little bit more growth there, um, especially because there are some positive um, feels around the whole thing. I'm personally looking forward to that World Cup as well. Uh, although it's in Australia, which is a little bit prohibitive for watching, but you know. 
Maybe in the mornings, in the summer mornings to watch uh, the World Cup will be fine. In any case, please let, let me know what you thought about the, tour the, the tournament. What do you think about England winning over Germany? I think in Germany, the overall feeling was that, yeah, it's a tough loss. They deserved a little, a little bit more. Um, yeah, I, I think it was a rather even final and someone had to. In any case, please give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my software universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!